Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric. And today what I thought we'd try to accomplish is kind of, without getting too crazy, what's going on with your charging system. And ways to check to see which unit is drawing the most. It may be drawing your battery down, or if you've got a battery that's not worth having. So, stay tuned. So welcome back. My name is Eric. If you didn't already know that, I do the weekday show Monday through Friday. Throw these educational ones out during the week, and I do ad lib on the weekends. All three of the personal development, the educational that we're doing here, the repairs, and the weekday are also on podcasts. You can listen to that. All right. So today, the the thing that we're looking for is if you find yourself having to put your tractor or your lawnmower on charge because the battery's not holding up we need to find out why right so this is where you have to become the investigator you got to investigate to try to figure out where you might have an issue and what i normally recommend is you start with the battery okay and and whether the charging system underneath the flywheel, which is your stator, is putting out enough juice to adequately keep your battery charged. Because when your lawnmower is running, if you have an electric PTO on it, that's going to draw so much juice the whole time you're mowing, right? So if the stator is not putting out enough to the battery or the battery is not healthy enough to take the charge, then your PTO will quit working. And I've seen low voltage burn a PTO up on your riding lawnmower or your zero turn. So the simplistic way, I mean, I know it's all in pieces here, but if you can imagine that this is still sitting on your lawnmower and this is your battery, but this is not a normal lawnmower battery. This is a deep marine, but I thought bigger, better, right? So you have your ground and you have your positive that's hooked to the system and what it's hooked to is coming from the stator to the starter to the PTO clutch everything is all intertwined so the way to start eliminating things is while you're all hooked up and your engine is running you should be able to put this on the negative, this on the positive, and you will see it's reading 12 volts. But once you start your lawnmower up, this should climb up into 13, 14, 15 volts. And it tells me that the stator is good underneath here. Now, if that needle doesn't move or it starts to come back, it's telling me that the stator is not keeping up or the there's a fault in the stator or the battery is shot but most often the case if you don't see that climb the minute you start that engine then it's your stator so that's the first thing you have to do is find out okay is the stator working and charging your battery back up keeping it at full charge because you got to have 13, 14, 15 volts coming into it all time because it's being drawn down by your PTO clutch when you start your lawnmower with the starter switch to your starter. We're going to assume the stator is bad on this. So what I do, I've already put some PV blaster on it and it sat for a little bit. So let's go through how you need to replace the stator. So you're going to need a puller. This is the style that we use and a lot of times we'll take a 
beveled knot and just stick it right there and then we want to set that right on top you want to thread these bolts back into where the studs are that we just took out and then you want to take And run them in little ways. Keep it up. And then we just want to start turning this. Get her snugged up. And this is a 3 8 to half. We've got a half inch socket actually driven onto here because it couldn't get one to fit. So we decided we'd make something that would fit. All right, so in the forward position, you want to give it just a little bit. And at that point, stop. Don't keep going with the impact. Grab yourself a hammer, and as you tighten this, you're putting pressure on these bolts, right? But you're also lifting this whole piece. You should hear it pop when she gets ready to pop. Something just happened. It's loose. See, you don't want to force it. You want to take your time. And these are just standard 5 16 bolts that we got from Tractor Supply. Put washers on. This is just a standard puller. here we'll lift right off get out of here mr. B all right so now that we have the cover off this is your stator and it's copper windings all the way around and you have magnets all the way around the inside of your flywheel. And as this goes around, it starts producing a current in bolts. And some have built-in regulators, some have ones that are mounted on the outside. But this is what is going to maintain and charge your battery while your lawnmower is running. And to simply replace this, you're looking at just four bolts. Take it out, put the new one back in, put the four bolts back in, and then plug it back into the system. Because coming out of the stator, it's just simply a two-wire, okay? So when you get the new stator, it's going to be a two-wire, and you just plug it right into your whip on your lawnmower, and it should be perfect. If 
the magnets have come loose or you see damage in here, then it's time to get a new flywheel. And while you have it off, this is a good time to take a look at the ring gear. You know, to see what kind of shape it's in. Some are steel, some are aluminum. But if it's this, then we can eliminate it, put a new stator on it, put that back on, tighten it back down, and you should be good to go. Now you can get this tool. It's just a battery checker load tester right at Harbor Freight. They're not that expensive. I think around 20, 25 bucks. I think this one I get 15 for, but we have an inflation, right? And these are nice because you could take and hook them up. Your red to your positive and your black to your negative. And they actually have a load tester that you can test to see if it's staying there or it's weak and the other thing that's nice is it having this hooked up once you start that lawnmower it'll start to creep up and it should be up into what they call the okay range which is the green and that tells you that you, your stator is putting out you know, minimum it should be 13, 14, or 15. It's got to be more than just maintaining the 12. Because the whole time you're mowing, your electric PTO clutch is drawing from the system. And if this isn't able to keep up, I've seen where you be mowing right along with a zero turn. And if your charging system isn't working, it ends up, the there's just too much juice is going to here kills the battery and kill the engine right there. It may start back up for you, have enough juice in the battery, but it doesn't have enough to run that PTO. So on that note, you know, on your zero turns, when it comes to your charging system, there is a fuse on my John Deere. So I know that there are on some models, you have a fuse that is also within the charging system that if the fuse goes it will not allow it to charge so on that note hopefully you guys have learned something don't worry about it. you can't get in you know over your head if you take your time the worst thing is trying to rush anything so if it's your stator go ahead order the correct stator for this model and when you get it in and you put it back just line up the keyway and that will drop back into place and once that's back into place then we can take and tighten her down and you're off and running again so on that note thanks so much for watching if you have any questions put them in the comments if I miss something guys you know put it in the comments but you know a lot of this stuff you can do yourself I mean some guys don't want to but you know if you want to learn this is how we learn it's I've seen too many YouTube videos and I'm not criticizing anybody but they show like it's all easy just poof and it magically comes off it takes time I'll tell you when you're turning wrenches for a living you're going to have some bruises and knuckles and hopefully you're wearing your gloves when you're doing this stuff so it, yeah, it's not cutting into you. But it's not just going to freely pop off for you if you just take this, you know, the puller and try to take it out with a half inch dual. It's not. It will bend these. And we have one guy that actually put a half inch air impact on it without going so far and then hitting it and actually bent this whole thing. It just, it was junk. So take it in so far, grab a hammer, wail on it, and then off you go again.